All right. Good day, everybody, and thanks for coming to our session. Um, we are really excited to be here in Drupal Con Vienna and present our session about media and the media initiative and how it progressed. And uh, it will be mainly focused on the site building part. So as you've probably heard, there's a lot of going on around media uh, recently, and uh, especially with the Drupal, co uh, Drupal core situation. Um, and we are really excited about it. We'd like to start about uh, with asking you um, who has already used media in your new Drupal 8 projects. Can you raise your arms? Wow, that's quite impressive. Were you, were you all satisfied with the progress? How was it? All good? So, so? All right, sure. Uh, we strongly believe that media is at the heart of every good website. So we all love big images, big sliders, uh, animations, videos, audio files, and all these combined together uh, brings a really good use case for the websites and for the life of the website for your end users. Uh, a huge, a really huge amount of time was invested in the la last years uh, on this topic, and uh, finally we have a really flexible architecture and a powerful ecosystem for handling media in Drupal 8. In this talk, we'd like to show uh, what the FAS is all about, and we'll first introduce ourselves. So, um, I'm Sasha Nikolic, and this is my co-speaker today, Basha. We, call all, we both come from Slovenia, which is a really small um, country just south of Austria, if you don't know it. And no, it's not Slovakia, it's Slovenia. <laughs> and uh, we both work for Amazing Labs Zurich. Uh, we'd like to start by giving some context about the problems that we were facing in Drupal 7, uh, because we think the media there was, frankly, bad, quite bad, and uh, how this was addressed in Drupal 8 recently, and how the media entity ecosystem brought all this to a whole new level. So basically we'll start from scratch and we'll progress through the examples. Uh, we'll first show the media entity and then step by step um, how we can easily improve the media handling in Drupal 8. Um, we will take a look at the base media module and then what it provides and then uh, we will talk about entity selection with the entity browser. We will focus on the site building part there, how we can properly configure it with all the views and uh, stuff like that. And then we'll introduce drop zone JS for the bulk upload of images, um, which is a really cool feature. We'll explain the embedding functionality with it and finally show uh, two of the main cropping solutions. There will also be some time for the questions at the end. Uh, for our presentation and for our demos, we will use these modules here. Uh, we expect that everybody here knows how to install and download modules from Drupal.org, and we strongly suggest that you use these modules when working with media in Drupal 8. Uh, and if you, of course, if you want to extend the functionality, just add some uh, more modules on top of that. All right, let's talk about Drupal 7 first. For me personally, Drupal 7 was a real struggle when dealing with media and uh, media entities. Um, first of all, it was, it was really badly handled out of the box. So if you ask me, you didn't really get much out of the box from Drupal 7. Uh, there were just image fields and file fields and they were not fieldable because they were fields and not entities. And this was really poorly addressed back then. So this also means that we could not, could not add captions, metadata, and uh, copyright information, for example. And what is more, we couldn't even reuse images and videos and stuff that we upload. But of course, have no fear, and Contrib is here because of the Drupal 7 architecture. So the thing is that we have a really small core and more modules around it. So we, as a really good Drupal community, we started building mod modules on top of Drupal core. And of course, that's how the struggle continue because the main functionality just switched from core to contract modules. 
and everybody was implementing their own custom features and functionality. So, uh, for example, we had the media module or the media OEmbed for remote resources. We had the media CK editor. We had the entity embed, but it was okay because, of course, the ar um, modular architecture that we had at that time. Um, of course, we still have it, though. Um, yeah, the main module that we were all using, it was the media entity, um, the media module, and other than that, we also had Scald, for example, which was a really new take on managing media in Drupal 7. Uh, basically, it was an extension of the WYSIWYG editor, um, of the SIG editor, where you could click, drag, and drop their so-called atoms, which were um, their definition of an entity into the editor, and it was highly recommended by the community. I didn't try it, but yeah. And of course, everybody knows probably IMC. Uh, this is a simple image file uploader that lets you browse folders inside the Drupal's file directory. And if you know its limitations, it's quite good, but frankly, I think it's brought, it was brought in Drupal 7 around 2006, and for me, it just looks something like brought in from Joomla. So, <laughs> uh, but then the time came for Drupal 7 to move along, and uh, a couple of years ago, Drupal 8 was introduced, and we finally uh, addressed the media topic in Drupal 8. And today will tell us more about the media initiative, how it came along, and uh, the new ecosystem that we are using now, and what's new in Drupal 8. Thank you. So yeah, <clears throat> after a really long development cycle and getting off the island and everything, this is what the editor experience looks like out of the box with the standard profile installed. So we are now, now adding an article. <clears throat> we can attach an image add some alt text, and then we can see how we can embed a simple image to the content of the post. We can set the alternative text, and, uh, the alignment, and also the caption. And <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's practically it. After that, we can, if we save the post, we can also go to the content and files, where we can see a basic file listing of the used uh, files with usage information. So are you impressed as this guy? Or a little bit disappointed like Mr. Downey here? <clears throat> so the situation with Drupal 8 out of the box was practically the same as in Drupal 7. It is true that we got the CK editor and inline editing, but as far as media handling goes, we were at the same point. We, we are still limited to files. We cannot add metadata. We can only reference local files, not no, no remote, uh, remote sources. We cannot reuse files, meaning if you want to re reuse an image, you, can, you have to upload it twice, and that's not really good. <clears throat> but plans to change that were underway well before Drupal 8 was released. At DrupalCon Prague in 2013, Jana Zureuts held a core conversation titled Let's Fix File and Media Handling Once and For All. And the ideas discussed their contraction. And next year at New York Camp 2014, a group of people got together, and that's how the media initiative was formed. Their goal was to add, uh, to address all the shortcomings of Drupal Core. So adding the ability to reuse content, adding the ability to reference remote sources, uh, providing a media library, and also support metadata handling. And in general, uh, provide a solution for generic media handling with, uh, with cropping, embedding, and so on. So that's how the media entity module was born. But what is media entity? Media entity is a normal content entity, just like Node. And and analogous to the node type on media entity, we have the media type here. But what is special about the media type is that it, takes, <clears throat> it makes use of media sources. Media sources are media type plugins that handle 
actual reference of media objects. They, <coughs> they uh, define how data is stored on the Drupal site. They provide me metadata mapping <coughs> and uh, So at DrupalCon New Orleans, the official media initiative was then announced by Dries. And another huge, uh, huge amount of work was um, made to bring media entity model into core. And that resulted in a huge patch which got committed and it's now in Drupal 8.4. And what this brings us is an improved API based on media entity. Uh, we also have two basic media types, image and uh, document, which provide parity for file and image fields. And everything else is still left for contrib. So <coughs> Drupal media is still a hidden module in Drupal 8, so you won't find it on the extent page. And to enable it, you either need to enable it via dr Drush or uh, by enabling a contrib module that depends on it. So in this case, we'll enable the media entity Instagram module, which allows us to uh, link Instagram posts. And after enabling the media module, we have this media type screen where we can see the image and the, doc, uh, the file uh, media types already present. <coughs> so now we'll add a new media type. <coughs> based on the media entity Instagram module. And here we select the source. And we'll, for now, we'll leave this metadata mapping settings alone, because we have to set up some other things first. <coughs> we'll create two fields for the title and uh, the caption metadata that media entity Instagram provides. Uh, you probably all know how to create fields, so I'll just skip this. Come on. There, we have two fields. Now we'll modify the form display a little bit. We can hide the newly created fields because media will take care of filling them out for, for us. And we can also hide the media name field, which corresponds to the node title. Uh, we can do that because media takes care of filling that name field for us automatically if we hide it here on the form display. <clears throat> and we'll also take care of the display modes. We'll hide the fields that we don't need and uh, change the formatter on the Instagram URL field. Yeah, I'll skip that. So now we can take care of the mapping we go back to the edit page and set how those metadata fields are mapped to our entity fields. And that's it. Now let's add a, the, uh, an Instagram post. We go to the media library and add a new media and item, paste the URL and save. And Drupal will take care of retrieving the Instagram post and also storing the metadata into the fields. You can see the caption down below. <clears throat> so how do we link now this to our article post, for example? We'll add a new entity reference field to our article, uh, referencing media types, and we'll set it so we can reference unlimited amount of media items just for the sake of example, because we'll build upon, uh, on that later. Uh, we need to take care of the display. We'll just display the rendered entity. It's, we're site builders, we're not front-enders, so let's let him, them handle that. <coughs> All right, so if we now go to the article form, we'll see that down below, we have an entity reference field with the autocomplete, but yeah, we can reference our previously created Instagram post. And there you go. Voila.
So while that was okay, the editor experience still leaves a lot to be desired. Im imagine creating a, an image gallery of 20 images and going back and forth to the media library, adding images, and then back, going back to the article note and filling out the autocomplete field. That's not really nice. So we'll now uh, take a look at how we can use the Entity Browser module to improve that. What is Entity Browser? Entity Browser provides a powerful UI, uh, UI component for selecting entities. Um, we can use it for selecting items from a library. We can use it for creating new items. We can use it even for more complex workflows where we can we, we add new items, edit them, rearrange them, and so on. So this is a schematics of, a, of an entity browser. This middle part is called the widget. This is where the main entity selection takes place. Um, <clears throat> this can be a view or a form or a form connected to some, to some external system and so on. There on top we have the widget selection plugin. This controls how we switch between different widgets because inside the single entity browser we can have a view and an and a entity form for example so this defines how we can switch between uh, it can be for example tabs or, or a drop down or buttons or whatever and down below sorry <clears throat> down below we have so called selection display and this is like a tray it acts uh, it holds the media items that are currently being selected. <clears throat> so where can we use the entity browser? We can use it as a replacement, for example, for file and image fields, and actually get some kind of uh, reusability there already. But we can also use it as a widget for the uh, entity reference field. We can use it with when we embed content in the WYSIWYG editor, or if we're developers, we can use it in a custom form. <clears throat> so let's now see how we can create a new image, uh, new entity browser. First, we want to be able to select already present items from a library. So we create a view. And what's important here is that we add a media browser bulk upload form field, because that <clears throat> takes care of the actual selection of items. We'll also add the thumbnail field just to see the preview of what we are selecting. And we also have to add a new display of, the, of type entity browser. So the entity browser module knows which views contain these displays and can be used in entity browsers. OK, so now we're adding a new entity browser. We go to a configuration, entity browser. And here we're just creating a simple entity browser just with the view that we just created. So we we'll leave the, all the basic settings set just as they are in, uh, with the defaults. <coughs> and we are, we are only concerned with the last step of this configuration where we'll add the view widget. So here we're adding the view widget with the view that we are just created before. There we go. One last step. We need to replace the autocomplete field on the article content type so that it uses the entity browser widget instead of autocomplete. <clears throat> and we have to set it so that it uses the entity browser that you just created. There we go. OK, now let's see it in action. If we go to the article form again. You can see that down below we have this entity browser widget and if we click the select entities a pop-up appears with the view that we just created and from there we can select the entities. There you go. So hopefully that was okay. <laughs> but <clears throat> we can improve upon that. So let's now see how we can create uh, an image gallery with bulk uploads, how we can edit those items that we just created, and how we can uh, 
modify the, the, the selection display. So we'll first, we'll, we just enabled inline entity form and drops on GAs modules. So I skipped that part because it's too boring. Now we are editing the entity browser configuration and we just added the selection display widget and we need to configure that so it displays the rendered item. And here in the last step, we'll add the drop zone widget with inline entity form and it will create image items. And we also add a form for creating videos. So these are all widgets that come with inline entity form. There you go. So if we now go back to the article form, okay, and click select entities. The same entity browser appears, but now on top we have the widget selection. And we're now bulk uploading three images. And when those are uploaded, the entity form appears below so we can modify the values. <clears throat> and then, for the sake of example, we also add a video from YouTube. We just paste the URL there, just like we did with Instagram before. And down below, you can see the entity selection. And there, we can remove or shuffle the selection. And there you go. Oh, well, maybe that's exaggerated. <laughs> Sasha will now continue with uh, embedding. That was great, right? But we can still improve that. <clears throat> so Drupal 8 has made a big step from Drupal 7 and included the CK editor uh, with Zivic Library in core. It also comes with an easy to use tool to embed local images in your text, but that is only limited to images. What if we want to embed, for example, tweets or videos or Facebook posts? We can't really do that in core. I'm sure you already have seen something like that, maybe. Uh, it's from a really famous US newspaper uh, site. Or maybe it's something like this. So a Twitter post, a Twitter tweet. Uh, well, to do that, we need to enable a new module called Entity Embed. So basically what it does, it just um, extends the functionality established by Drupal Core, and this module has become a standardized solution uh, in Drupal now, in Drupal 8 now, to uh, embed any remote resource or into, the, into directly the WSIVIC editor in Drupal 8. So, for example, um, this module doesn't really care what you need to embed, uh, and as long as this piece is a content, um, is a standard entity in Drupal, uh, we can embed it. So, for example, we can do it, we can embed videos, related articles, also commerce products, for example, and every kind of media entities, basically. So let's see it in action. We first need to go to content authoring and text editor. Here we will add it. Uh, here we will add a new embed button. Uh, and we saw that there is already one pre-configured button for uh, referencing, for embedding nodes. But we want to create a new one for media. So we call it media. We select um, the media uh, entities that we want to embed. And uh, we strongly suggest that you create a new icon for every embed button uh, that you want to create. So, for example, if you want one for media, one for files, uh, you should create for each embed button a separate uh, icon because by default it will take the E and it might be really confusing for the end users. So, in the next step, we can navigate to the text editor screen and we can drag and drop our newly created embed button into the media group. 
and then we need to configure some extra settings. So we need to check the embed, um, uh, the display embedded entities, and we need to make sure that in the allowed HTML tags, uh, we have the entity uh, displayed there. If we want to add alt and titles to images, we need to also add that to the um, our attributes up there. And as an extra tip, um, I'm not sure why, but we get some extra errors if uh, we don't uh, shuffle um, or place the display embedded entities below the restrict images on the side, so make sure you do that. And as a final step, we can just go to the node now, uh, which uses a basic HTML format, and we can embed a media uh, with a pre-configured uh, entity browser that we did before. And in this example, we are just embedding a video. And there we go. It's already in the Seek editor. We can save it and we can watch it. All this comes pre-configured, so we didn't style anything. That's why the video is really small. <laughs> All right, we are getting there. That looks quite exciting, right? <laughs> Uh, just one more, more thing to show from us, and it's how we handle image cropping in Drupal. Um, so, Crop API provides a storage for hopefully all cropping solutions in Drupal 8 for media. And it, it can handle uh, two types of crops. So, one type is by region, and the second one is by reference point. And we strongly suggest to use the image widget crop for uh, region cropping solutions, but it has its downsides. So everything has to be done manually. And for each image style that you want to create some uh, predefined crops, uh, you need to do it like manually for each image style. And that might take quite some time if you have a lot of image styles. So. The second one is the focal point. And with the focal point, you want to say that like, this is the main part of the image that you want to focus on, and it will automatically try to crop the area around that. And that part, um, that is really easy to use, right? You just select your main point, and that's it. Let's see a quick demo uh, of the uh, crop region cropping. So here we are uh, first create a new crop type and set, set soft and hard limits. So if you're not familiar with that, soft limits are when the user is setting a, um, a region that he wants to crop, he will just be warned about that and he cannot, I mean, he can still go lower than the um, region that he's selecting. But the hard limits are the real limits that uh, it cannot, that the um, the region cannot be saved at. So, as we have seen in the examples, we, we just reached the soft limits and we were still able to save the image style. And in the next step, we need to add the manual crop effect to the image style. So, we need to edit an image style, add, edit from the drop effect drop down. And we recommend that you rearrange those two so that the cropping is before the scaling. It makes sense. And as a last step, we need to add the crop widget to the media type. And I think that's it. So finally, we can add a cropped image to an article and see that in action. So we are creating a gallery. We select our image. We upload it and we can edit it. And here we see a crop selection. We can enlarge and select our cropping area. So let's just focus on the mouth of the cat. That's the most important part. <laughs> Save that. And there we go. 
let's see that node. And this is the cropped image. All right, back to today. He will tell us more about where to get the resources. So if you liked uh, what we showed you today, and if you're a developer and you would like to help <coughs> developing the media solutions, you can contact the media team on IRC. They're on Drupal Media on Freenode. Um, there's a Drupal, there's a page about the Drupal Media Initiative at drupalmedia.org. Uh, if you get stuck and you need help, there's a Drupal, uh, there's a GitHub book about media. And Marcos Cano and Ivan Zhuget uh, created uh, really great tutorials, so you can watch those. Uh, the solution that we use today for the demos uh, is on my GitHub account. And if you install the media starter profile, you'll get what we just showed you. <clears throat> if you like to see how the media entity ecosystem works in production, there are already two uh, distributions using it. One is Thunder and the other one is Lightning. So yeah, check those out. And let's not forget, all this wouldn't be possible but these amazing people that contributed thousands of hours for implementing the media handling. So let's give them a big applause, please. We're, we're open for discussion now. Yeah, hey, thanks for the presentation. Um, we're currently having about um, five to six sites using media in Drupal 8.3. And um, we're currently wondering um, about the, app, um, the upgrade path from 8.3 to 8.4. Because um, I've just checked out the project page on media, and they are saying all media submodules have to provide an update, upgrade path. For, to the new um, 8.4 then. Um, and I have just checked out those modules, but they mostly don't have. Yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> the upgrade path is, n is not complete yet, but it will be provided with Media Entity 2.x. Okay. So once this, this is stable, it will, the uh, 2.0 re release will be ready and you can run it. Okay, but um, Drupal 8.4 is coming out on October 4th, I think. Um, can I upgrade my site to 8.4 or better not? I think better not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, another question to um, cropping. Um, is it um, possible to crop um, a media entity or a media image, let's say, um, for two nodes with different croppings, or is the cropping safe to the media entity? Yeah, the cropping is safe per, Im per image, yeah, per, per usage. So, not, not per usage, sorry, per media, per uh, media. media item. So, no. Okay, all right. Cool, thank you. Anything else? Hi. Um, I often observe clients and text um, no, or content creators to upload the same file several times because they might not be aware of uh, the fact that you can reuse files. Is there maybe a mechanism to detect duplicated files and probably merge them automatically or something? Not with that I'm aware of, not, not with the media entity ecosystem, no. But that could be like a contribute contrib module, I guess. Yes, probably. Yeah. OK. More? What is the expected time, or at least like any kind of uh, idea when we, when it will be ready? What you expect to test so it will be ready? You know, what are the main issues that you deal with? What is what are we waiting for? Yeah, so I attended the buff that was held by the media initiative guys, and actually the main problem right now is funding. Uh, most of this was done in volunteer time, so developers are now working on projects and there's nothing we can do about it unless we find either money or people that are able to do this. 
Uh, you didn't mention the URL embed uh, module um, because I can see a lot of uh, cases where you don't want to, to store like Twitter stuff in, in the database if you use it a lot. Um, is, uh, does that fit somewhere? In the I think Sasha researched that a bit. Maybe you can answer that. Yeah, basically we didn't uh, we didn't include that one because we can just use the embedding with the URLs like we did before uh, in the examples. So I think it's quite a similar solution to that one. Um, thank you. Um, one regular question that I get from potential clients is like, can we organize the media library in folders like on, like on on the drive, you know, like what would you suggest to tell them? So, as media items are normal content items, you could probably create folders by some kind of taxonomy system, cool. I guess. Yep. That we didn't show that, I personally didn't actually create it yet, so. Okay, thanks. I can't give you an, a solution right now, <laughs> but I'm sure it's, it can be done. Okay, anything more? No? Okay, then. If you want to contribute, join the sprints. The media team is probably still here. And yeah, please um, rate our session. Thanks.